Today is Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. Hope you're having a wonderful day today. Thanks so much for letting us be a part of your day. If you have a great time and don't mind, please do post us, share us, or tell others about us. If you don't like what you hear, then simply tell no one. Today is National Popcorn Day, so I must ask, Colin, Anthony, what are your favorite styles or flavors of popcorn? Well, I'm making the popping sound because it is National Popcorn Day, and I'm pretty <laughs> mad right now because Colin didn't bring us no popping popcorn from his job. I dropped the ball on that one. Yeah, like you said, you're gonna bring the popcorn. I was kind of excited. I did, I did. So... on National Popcorn Day. I forgot about the popcorn. Yes, I I don't know how I have a job here or at my other job. Like you 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 had the bag <laughs> in your hand, and then I, I fumbled you, the bag. If you fumbled it, it's probably all the butter from the popcorn. You know that that could be the yeah, reason. Butter fingers. Yeah. There you go. That's that's what it is. Yeah. I did drop the ball on that. To, to answer uh, Kevin's question, I'd have to go with caramel popcorn. Is my favorite. Ooh, I love me some caramel popcorn. I mean, I'm more of a Chicago type of guy. You Ooh. know. I got you next time. I do. Yeah, that guy's pretty. That guy's pretty smooth. No okay. cap. Like for real, for real. What about you, Kevin? Um, I don't know. I, I kind of do mine a little bit differently. I wouldn't even say it's like a style. I just do it differently. So like we'll go to the movie theaters and so I'll drizzle like us like a ton of like butter oh, on it, yeah. of course, right? Of yeah. course. Yeah. But but this is where I take it a step further. And I have to admit, I got this for my brother because he did it at first. And I was like, that looks disgusting. But as soon as I tried, I was like, bro, this slaps. It does make your popcorn a little soggy if you do it wrong, but you take lime and you put lime on your popcorn. I have never that just heard sounds that in good. my life. Put lime on your buttered popcorn. Lime flavored popcorn. Like so is sour it lime? and salty. So I was about to say, is it lime and butter or is it just... Yeah, so you butter the heck out of it and then yeah. you put some lime juice on it. Ooh, Like go to the movie theaters and ask them for a couple limes. Have a have yeah, a, have a field now. day. I might try that at my job tomorrow. No, I'm not going to lie. It, it t- <laughs> tastes pretty good. But you have to, of course, have an appetite for like like sour taste and like lime so yeah yeah, yeah. of course so Sweet but yeah that's yeah. that's mine that sounds good shout out to kevin brother yeah. too that sounds good yeah, yeah shout mm. out what is your brother's name cole shout out to cole man hmm, that sounds good lime and butter like you gotta <laughs> you you must soak it in butter yeah the no, popcorn yeah <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah it's good that's mm. speaking of popcorn um Actually, I don't even have a segue. No, no segue for that one. Yeah, one but, I mean, like, okay. So, speaking of bags, because, you know, you did drop the bag. There were a couple of teams that dropped the bag this week, this past weekend. And we're going to talk about that. Like, Yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah. That was a, that was a better segue. Um, <laughs> all good. Thank all you. Good. Thank all you. Good. I appreciate it. Thank you, let's talk thank about you for saving me, that. Anthony. Thank you for saving me. Okay. So, yeah. So, uh, let, let's talk about... One team in particular who dropped the bag, and I'm pretty sure everybody can give a, a pretty large guess on say, who that might be, and that would be the Dallas Cowboys. I knew it was going to happen, man. Like, 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 like we talked about this literally last show. I was afraid. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, on paper, the, the Cowboys are on the roster to do it, but, I mean, I just knew Mike McCarthy was leading it, and it's just it's the Dallas Cowboys, man. What I mean? Yeah, it's true. So and talk about that last play, like I don't even really want to talk about the last play because there was so many problems that happened before that. I don't even I don't even see it as all that much relevant. Like you can't go into a game down seven to twenty three at halftime and expect to make that comeback and win in the wild card playoffs. Yeah, that's true. You that's can, true. You just you just don't do that. You can't do it. I mean, we did it with the with the uh, Cardinals. How'd that pan out? Right, and I mean, you're so, coming into a playoff game. Like, this is no regular season. This yeah. is not, you know, one of those teams that don't have an opportunity or have the talent to make it all the way. Like, come on now. You're facing right. Jimmy G. I'm not saying Jimmy G's Tom Brady or Aaron Rodgers, he's but... A, he's an average starting quarterback. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then Debo, oh boy. That man's a problem. I knew he was going to be a problem. The and wide back. I, uh, Debo Sanders. Yeah, I mean, I don't know, man. Uh, I was very skeptical going into it, so... Uh, it didn't surprise me that we lost, but at the same time, I wasn't going to pick over the Cowboys. You know, that's why I took the pick with the Cowboys instead of the 49ers. But Respectful. that's not to say that I wasn't a, a, extremely emotional during the game because I was going through it. Uh, but it's tough, man. It's I, tough. I was going to ask. So obviously I'm the one non-Cowboys fan 
on the uh, podcast. What were you guys' initial reactions, maybe that first 24 hours after everything had happened? What were you feeling in that moment? Because I, I know it's different a I, little bit today. So I, was at, so I was at work whenever it happened. I told everybody around me, I said, please don't talk, talk to me. For the next <laughs> I said, give That's me 24 funny. hours. And they were very confused. I was like, if you've never heard of it, basically coaches have a rule after a loss. You don't talk to them for some do 12 hours, some do 24 hours. I said, don't talk to me for 24 hours. I was I was going through it. Coach Kevin. So, God. Anthony, what about you? How how did you react to it? I wasn't surprised. I mean, I really like, like because you don't know what you're going to get with the Cowboys. You very, just you yeah. never know what team you're going to get, and it's frustrating. It very. Because, like, you go and, well, and then uh, it was that, and then also why they didn't target C.D. Lamb more. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, like that is low-key your second or first best wide receiver yeah. on the team. I mean, like, what are you guys doing not targeting him? Like, come on, come on, guys. Like, you drafted him for a reason, so target the man. Like, he, you've seen him, what he can do. You've seen what he can do during the season. So you don't think he's not going to show out. He's a superstar. So you know he's going to show out on the field in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean, honestly, the, the number one thing that I actually wanted to highlight about the Cowboys that – really um, made me mad. And I know some people will talk about the ref situation between Dak and the spotting of the ball and, you know, all that. And I get that. Um, And some people are going to talk about, you know, the inconsistent offense and all that. And I get it. I Trust me, I get it. But as a Cowboys fan, this personally, this is what made me most, most upset. Let me, let me read you the stat line. 14 penalties ties the playoff high in NFL history. That's how many penalties the Cowboys had. They had 14 penalties that totaled up into losing 89 total yards. That's I mean, crazy. That is. I mean, don't well, the Cowboys have like the most penalties? This yeah. Year? Yes. Well, Connor Williams is the most penalized player in the NFL. Which is insane. I mean, so the Cowboys, I know... Uh, I read this stat that uh, they were top two in not only penalties this year, but penalty yardage. Yes. Uh, given up this year, them and the uh, I believe the Las Vegas Raiders were top two in that stat. Uh, it, I mean, that, and at the end of the day, I mean, that you comes see to why coaching. you see why both teams aren't in the playoffs anymore, right? Well, it's true. It's true. Absolutely, because you can't make those kind of mistakes and expect to beat even the somewhat good teams. Not even the, like forget the elite teams. Just like the San Francisco 49ers, who are a wild card team that got in on the last weekend of the regular season mm-hmm. you can't beat a team like that you can't beat any team with 14 no. penalties in my opinion no. it's absolutely outrageous and for anybody that has ever played football or studied football enough you everybody is going to say the same thing when they hear that a team had 40 for, had 14 penalties and that is the fact that that team had no discipline yeah uh, yeah and discipline comes from coaching i don't care if you're a million dollar nfl player or if you lead the team or if you're the you're the backup to the backup to the backup, discipline goes all the way around the team. Absolutely, and I, that is the coach's yeah. job. And I agree. Um, one thing I will say that I said after the game, um, I couldn't remember a playoff game in which that were that that excuse me that were three defensive holding calls on the defensive lineman, at least that from what I can remember. I know, I know there was at least three. Well, we had neutral zone infractions as well. Well, I mean, called Two of them from Randy Gregory alone. Yeah, and I just, I, it, there were so many penalties that I just, I was sitting there, I was just like, I, I never remembered a game being officiated like this. As you said, it breaks the record for most penalties called in an NFL, what was it, a playoff or just any game? Yeah, yeah. so it, it ties the NFL high in penalties in NFL uh, playoff history. I mean, that's just... It was insane. It felt like every you and know, we we've had a, plays. we've had a few double digit penalty uh, games this season. So. Yeah, well, I mean that comes to a uh, lack of discipline. Yeah, extreme lack of discipline, and yeah. that for that reason is why um, I want you know McCarthy gone. Obviously, so <laughs> now let me ask y'all this: as the Cowboy fans on the show, you got two coordinators. Both at whom uh, are getting looked at. Are for you sure coaching. you got two coordinators? Because <laughs> I know you're looking well, at my saying. screen right now. I, I am looking. Um, I mean, if you had the if you had the choice, which one are you uh, are you most likely trying to keep, Dan Quinn or uh, uh, Kellen Moore? Well, I mean, look, Dan Quinn might be getting this Broncos job because the he, Broncos are already 
the Broncos already interviewed Dan Quinn for a head coaching job. Yeah. If he wants so, it, he'll have it. I mean, that's just basically what it boils down to. But I'm not done with my Cowboys thing. I just have a few more things that I want to go over. Um, but who would you rather have, though? Okay, to, to, out of those two. To answer your question, I'd rather have Dan Quinn. One, he's an unexperienced head coach, um, and he's completely flipped around a defense that was right. very, really bad. In one off season. Yeah, in one off season, spectacular. And um, so, obviously, I'd rather have Dan Quinn. Obviously, the players respect him and hold him to, in a high regard. So, for that reason, I'd rather have Dan Quinn. But back to what I was gonna, I was saying. So, yeah, we have 40, 14 penalties and uh, totaled into 89 total yards and uh, flags, which is just, no, you can't have that happen. We had five sacks allowed. Y'all want to take a guess of how many sacks we got? Not, th- not as not as many as five, I'll tell you that yeah, much. Yeah, probably definitely not. Yeah, because we had zip. We didn't Zero. have any. Yeah, yeah, so we had none. We had 77. This is, this is a big issue, and a lot of Cowboys fans have this issue. We have 77 rushing yards. With a ninety million dollar running back, yeah, and a and the incredible back that we have in Tony Pollard, seventy seven yards. That's crazy. That's wild. Yep, that's and a, it. And, and a problem. I mean, and this like, will be a topic that we'll probably address later. And I and I like Dak. Don't get me wrong. I I love Dak. He, I think he's a great leader. But two hundred and thirty passing yards to a forty million dollar quarterback when it means the most to your team is. No, get, can't happen. Dak Prescott had it was less than 150 yards through three quarters. And total. I get it. And I get it. A lot can't of the, a lot of even Ceedee Lamb, he was targeted more than it done more than the record shows. But every time he was targeted, just about it felt like there was a flag. He get a 30 yard gain, flag. 30 yard gain, flag. So anyway, I mean, I'm gonna leave it there for my Cowboys heated discussion. I just wanted to throw that in there. And I mean, speaking of the Cowboys. I don't know if you guys know this, but the Cowboys 49ers game was one of the most watched playoff games in the past seven years. Wow. I and mean, it whistle by the Dallas Cowboys, everybody wants us to lose. It's quite simple. And, <laughs> I mean, you know Stephen A was watching that game. Oh, yeah. Boy, I, I had I had to stay off of Twitter so for so long. <laughs> I was so heated. Anyway, all right, so we'll, we'll segue off of the Cowboys. I don't want to talk the, about the Cowboys uh, forever. Um I think Kansas City is back. I think they're a team that is to be reckoned with. I get it. It was the Pittsburgh Steelers. I get it. Pittsburgh Steelers. That guy, Patrick Mahomes, turned on the switch just like that. I mean, I believe I saw he had five touchdowns in like 11 minutes or something like that. It was the quickest five touch, five passing touchdowns in NFL history. Ridiculous. In that amount of time. I mean, I'll tell you this. It, it, he, he scored five touchdowns so fast that me and my dad got on our phones. They're like, how many? Like, what? Like, who has thrown the most touchdowns in an NFL playoff game? I mean, it was, I don't know off the top of my head. But. It, there, um, I'd have to go back and look, but Brady's one of them. It's seven. Seven is the most ever thrown. It, you know what it reminded me of? Or, I believe it was six, actually, to correct myself. I believe it's six. Seven in regular season. Sorry about that. I don't no, have I, the stats in front of me. So, n- But no, but Kansas City, is, is I think they're back. Yeah. Do you you know guys where- are wild. You guys are wild right now. What but I never, th- I never counted Literally, Kansas. You I guys never, are wild. but I never counted Kansas City out. So no, I, I want to hear what. So Anthony, what do you mean? Yeah, what, Kansas oh. City never left. There yeah, you go. okay. So okay. yeah, like, there, like, yeah. What are you guys saying? They're back. They've well, always been there. Just, First of all, it, it's the playoffs. It's okay, the, it's the playoffs. Okay, but guys. We're, but we can't sit here. The past and say, times they were in the playoffs. What happened? But we can't sit here and say that they didn't go through a slump. Okay, they went through a little bit. It's the regular season. Okay, you still have to win games. It's the regular seat. Everybody knows that Tom Brady be Tom Brady in the playoffs. Come on. It's like LeBron James in the playoffs, bro. <laughs> he don't care about the regular season. Anthony, I appreciate your enthusiasm. In the playoffs? Well, obviously, that's in a horrible the playoffs. record. So. Anthony, I appreciate your enthusiasm. In the playoffs, you know it's the time to turn up. Anthony. And you know that bad man, not Aaron Rodgers, obviously, but you know. Anthony. Patty Mahomes is going to show up with Travis Kelsey. Like, come on, guys. Anthony, you know what uh, I was trying to lead to? What? I heard said. That's okay. why you're my boy, Cullen. That's I'm just saying. Boy. I'm just saying. Look, and I and I was gonna agree with you, Anthony, that I don't believe Kansas City ever was truly away. I mean, yes, yeah. they had a rough part of the season, about a month, month and a half. But you know what? It reminded me of the Mahomes and the Chiefs game. 
It reminded me of when they won the Super Bowl, when they got into all those deficits, and they would just sit there and go on their runs. Turn it around. Uh-oh. Tennessee Titans, Houston Texans, and then, of course, in the Super Bowl against the San Francisco 49ers, yeah. they just turned it on in I, an yeah. instant. I don't know, man. Uh, they re- they overcame deficits. I mean, I know well there wasn't much of a deficit against Pittsburgh, but they just they the overcame T.J. Watts. What they did, yeah, yeah. that's all they had to do. So yeah, and and it's a and, bad man. Yeah, and it's gonna be tough going against Josh Allen. I mean, because Josh Allen is elite. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, them Bills, bro. They took care of the Patriots, no problem. That's gonna be a great game. Right. No problem at all. They said cold weather, bro. We'll we'll just wear t-shirts. We're fine. We're fine. Right. Right. So, you know, we, we were talking about the cold being an impact or the cold being a reason why it would be a low-score game and, you know, Patriots might take, mm no. I'm glad I chose the Bills. Josh Allen is the dude over yeah. there. Yeah, he, he, he's elite. I'm excited to see this KC-Bills matchup again. Oh, yeah. This is going to be good. I like it. It will. Um, this is the one. I don't care what the number is. I'm taking the over. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's gonna be a good game. Yeah, I, I I know me and Anthony got this game wrong. Uh, when we made our predictions last week, uh, the one part you ever had uh buyer's remorse whenever you sit there and you buy something and you're like, dang, I really shouldn't have bought that. Yeah. The moment I had picks remorse when I knew I picked the wrong <laughs> team is a they showed us the field. It was before the pregame where they sh- sat there and showed how they heated the field so it wasn't going to be any crazy conditions. So Josh Allen was going to be able to throw it out. I was just yeah. like, okay, so Josh Allen's going to throw, but, like, you know, I, I still I still like the Patriots. They showed the press conference from earlier in the season of when they lost, I think it was, like, 14-10 to 10 or something. Like it was, like, a really low-scoring game. Yeah, that's why, sh- that's why the uh, over-under was so low for this game. And they showed Micah Hyde and Jordan Poyer, that press conference interview, and just how, like, pissed off they were and how motivated and they had this whole package and I was just like yeah I might have picked up the wrong matchup here. yeah no the Bills are legit and they are Josh Allen is that guy he's sure. he, is, he is he is that guy he's yeah top five so quarterback. for sure but yeah. oh while we're in the AFC um this is a take that I have of my own and y'all can agree or disagree but I uh I think this is the first time in a long time that an NFL team is ranked number one seed, but they don't deserve it. Okay. I think Tennessee's a phony. Okay, so I have some Derrick Henry news. This is from 24-7 News Source. Okay. So Derrick Henry is one step closer to getting back on the field. Henry participated in padded practice with the Titans on Tuesday. Tennessee had some defensive players bang into Henry. He went through some running back drills. To, intimi- um, to to really you know imitate the on-field experience and stuff like that. ESPN yeah, is reporting visible. that the Titans' decision to activate Henry will be made on Friday. Henry went on injured reserve after breaking his foot in Week 8 against the Colts. And that's all the news um, from 24-7 with Derrick Henry's update. So he should be ready to play very soon. Yeah. No, I mean, Derrick I, Henry, best running back in the NFL, fresh, hasn't played in I just I just don't weeks. know if he's 100%. I, yeah, I think he's a fear factor, and I might bite my—I I might have to bite my tongue on that because, like you know, like maybe he goes off for two hundred and twenty yards, and, and that could happen. That's very well possible. That's very well. But without Derrick Henry playing at one hundred and ten percent for the Tennessee Titans, I think they're a phony. I think. And this is his first padded practice too, because like I, you know how players play in the playoffs, especially with Derrick against Derrick Henry, like they're, they're gonna going go for the legs. Exactly. So, I mean, Tennessee, to your point, Kevin, because I know you say that you're you believe that there might not be a deserving number one seed. They are six and two against playoff teams this year. Six and two. I don't know, man. And again, those are a lot of those were without Derrick Henry. I it's going to be very interesting to see, like you said, if he is at a hundred percent coming off this injury. But all I know is that when he was at a hundred percent, the NFL was in a very very scary place. Yeah, it is true. If he's hundred percent, he could. Uh... They could really take it all the way, but I don't know, man. I just uh very just, interesting to see this weekend. Tennessee is just an interesting team. Um, but hopping back over to the uh to the NFC to close this one out. Um I mean, I'm gonna just keep it simple. I mean, the the Bucks are gonna go ahead and they're gonna beat the 49ers <laughs> and the Packers are gonna take care of the Rams. So I mean, are you, who are y'all gonna take? Y'all gonna take Brady or are y'all gonna take Rogers? Just really simple. Real quick, you did flip those. So it's the uh, Packers are facing the 49ers and the Bucks are playing the Rams. You said it backwards. Just Did I say the it Bucks wrong? are facing the Rams? The Bucks are playing the Rams and then the 49ers are playing the Packers. Okay, you're right. I'm sorry. I yes. mean, Apologies. at the end of the day, <laughs> Apologies. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean like, come on now. Apologies. But yes. The question is, the question Rogers is Rodgers or Brady? Or Brady. 
And I'm taking, ah, gosh, sheesh, ah. I mean, I'm pretty sure I said it on the last podcast, I don't bet against Brady, so. Yeah, I don't bet against Brady. And either. I don't like Aaron Rodgers, so. Until Aaron Rodgers proves that he can beat Tom Brady. That's what I'll say. In the playoffs? I'll take that, too. I'll take that all day. I, it's, just, it's just a foregone conclusion at this point. All right, so, interesting. Okay, I just, uh, just had to get y'all's opinion on that one, so, uh. But uh, jumping over into the association, um, we got some trade. We got the trade deadline coming up. So, uh, Colin Anthony, either y'all got uh, anything for the trade deadline? I do got something regarding Philadelphia Sixers Ben Simmons. If that's even what team he's gonna claim <laughs> sure. at this point, I, it's very weird. To he needs that. to get out of Philadelphia. I gotta get out of there. Yeah. So there was a rumored uh, report by Shams of the Athletic that said the Sacramento Kings were able to throw in an offer for Ben Simmons uh, that included Buddy Heald, Tyrese Halliburton, Harrison Barnes, and two first-round picks. It the, the deal became kind of a dead deal whenever the Kings were wanting the Sixers to add Tobias Harris and Matisse Tybel to that deal. Which is completely understandable. That's a lot of stuff for right, that, one that, guy. And also Sacramento was not willing to include guard De'Aaron Fox, and they want to, him to be the future cornerstone they're giving, of the team. They're giving up Buddy Heald. And yeah, Buddy Heald. Did I hear that right? Two Buddy Heald's first? huge. So it was Buddy Heald, Tyrese Halliburton, Harrison Barnes, and two first-round picks. That's a lot. That is a lot. But, I mean, I get it for Ben Simmons because – Ben Simmons is that defensive like I get it, but that's a potential that's a potential locker room hazard. You need another guy in that trade. Another well, guy in a pick. And who? A, like a three or four or something. Who? From Philadelphia? So you're huh. saying Philly should have No 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 no. I'm saying I'm saying that um I'm saying the Kings. Like the Kings need to get something else besides Ben in that trade. That's a lot of stuff for one guy. Well again, and so the Sixers really haven't budged on their what they value Ben Simmons. Uh, it was rumored that once they added Tobias Harris into the trade that the talks kind of went dead, and also Matisse Tybel was also rumored to be in the trade, but it, nothing was ever confirmed. Look, I would put in, sorry to interrupt, I would put in uh, Tyrese Maxey, for real. I mean, hey, listen. Like Ben Simmons and Maxey to that trade to that's a good trade. Sacramento? That's yeah. a good trade. That's not bad. It's not. Because Maxey's balling right hey, now. Hey, what, what year are those uh, first rounds? Uh, they'd be so the NBA has a rule wherever you can't do um back to back years with first round picks. You have to like say for example if they're trading next year's, which is it would be it'd be the twenty twenty three first and round pick and twenty twenty five. Oh, so, they, so, okay. so, so okay. you're not allowed to do like consecutive years. I, I forget you. what the rule is called, but you're not allowed to go back to back. Um, I did not know that. Ben actually. Simmons also there was another rumor uh that or well not rumor there was a report that came out uh when this rumor came out. That he is willing to sit out the entire year. Yeah, I saw that. Um, if you know a trade hasn't been made, uh, apparently the Sixers also have no interest in a Russell Westbrook trade. Not that that is going to be a shocker to anybody. Yeah. Um, yeah, really. It to me, guys. It, it All seems, respect to you, Russ. Like for real. All respect to you. It, the most likely scenario is that Ben Simmons is going to sit out the entire year. I don't yeah. see. I any, think it's not a standstill. Any contender is going to really truly because I. The Kings were a team that was kind of like a dark horse. It's like, oh yeah, maybe they'll they'll send something, but obviously the two sides couldn't agree upon anything. And that was a lot of stuff too. So. I mean, I just yeah. want De'Aaron Fox out of Sacramento too. I'm not <laughs> saying I want him to go to the um to go to the 76ers. I mean, Bring I think him he would to do... the Mavs. Speaking of the Mavericks, I also have another uh, guy that you brought up, I believe, last week. Uh, Jalen Brunson. Yes. The New York Knicks are interested oh, man. in oh, Jalen Brunson. Gosh. The New York Knicks have already pulled off one deal before the deadline and getting Cam Reddish from the Atlanta Hawks, but it sounds like the team isn't done and trying to stockpile guards. And they've, and they've apparently contacted Dallas about Jalen Brunson and apparently, quote, want him bad. Yeah, makes sense. He's balling. He yeah. is balling. Um, they have so many guards on that team, though. That's my thing. No exact deal has been come forth. Okay, so time. who who does the Knicks have as of this point? I know it's not going to be Julius Randle, so I'm well, not going to say that. Well, just listing off the roster off the top of my head, they have obviously Julius. They have uh, R.J. Barrett. They just required Cam Reddish from the Atlanta Hawks, which I don't. I, I think you have to keep. Is it doesn't matter? They're not going to get rid of him. I don't. I wouldn't see it either. Yeah, they're going to try to get Z. They're going to try to get rid of. Probably yeah, Kemba. <laughs> they're, they're gonna they're, they're gonna try to get Z after. Correct rookie, me if I'm wrong. Years over. Correct me if I'm wrong. Kemba does play for the Knicks. Yeah, he, he does. But, but I, they're 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 um sitting him right. He's but kinda, he's not a starter. He, no, he's not a starter. And he's yeah. been kind of balling though. 
Yeah, I mean he's, he's been balling recently. Every for sure. time he gets the chance. So I, if I'm the Mavericks, I'm not. I don't have a problem with getting Kemba for Brunson. Yeah, Emmanuel quickly, uh, Mitchell Robinson, I think that would Derek actually... Rose, mm-hmm. Obi Toppin. I mean the Knicks do have a lot of interesting pieces. I don't know necessarily as a Mavs fan who y'all would want for Jalen. What would you know be the best fit? Is Kemba a point guard? Yeah, yeah. Kimba would be Kimba would be your typical undersized scoring. But is guard. he on a decline? Yeah, absolutely. There's a reason he got traded out of Boston. Hey, he's not on a decline. He's he's he, he, he he's on a decline. He is not. He's an just all-star. On, He's you're right. He's not, he's not an all star. Okay, anymore. so are we saying he's, he's like he's like a CP three kind of stay steady kind of thing, or is he? I would say uh, CP3 is more of a floor general. Kimba is more or less like your guy that's he can come off the bench, give you valuable buckets, kind of yeah. work, provide some energy. You know, I just don't think at this career you'd really trust him operating more than 20, 25 minutes. I okay, really don't. but he can at least give you can, but double he, figures. But if he, he can, can pick up, absolutely. But if he can pick up where Luca is doing, and he can. You know, dish out some assists, get some rebounds here and there. And I don't know about up, assists though. Put I, up, put up ten, yeah. twelve points. He, he's not he'll really a distributor. Put, yeah, he's he'll really he'll at least put up like, like probably fifteen. Hell, if he wants to be an efficient three point shooter, that's fine with me. I, I don't mean, know. he's <laughs> he's a bucket getter. Pierce. I don't know. These are just these are just things that I'm coming with, coming up with because I know they won't get rid of Randall. I know. I don't think they'll get rid of quickly. I don't think. I don't know. Nah, they're uh, not getting rid of quickly. So There's no I way. Know. I don't know who else they would really be thinking about. I mean, about. listen. If it would the, even be somebody the Mavericks would be interested in. Well, again, if the Mavericks can't get, I know we talked about John Collins and Miles Turner uh, last week as potential trade targets. Don't be surprised if Mitchell Robinson somehow included that deal. Mitchell Robinson's a really mm. athletic defensive big, can really but lock it down as an anchor. Again, it just would be, he'd be in the package is what I'm saying. So I don't necessarily, if you'd, I, I wouldn't say you would trade Robinson straight up for Brunson. That wouldn't be an even deal. But I'm saying if there is a deal that for like comes forth, don't be surprised if Robinson's included in the package for the Knicks. Well, I know that they're not interested in Miles Turner anymore. So there you go. Uh, I don't know. I guess we'll just have to keep our uh, our ears peeled. And Colin, did you ever get a chance to uh, look up when that uh, trade deadline ends? The trade deadline for the NBA, I want to say, is the 12th of February. Or no, it's the 10th of February. Excuse 10th me. February. Okay, 10th. so it, it so is coming up. It yeah, is it's coming, coming up fast. Yep. So, I mean, we'll just have to uh, keep our ears peeled for that one. And it's crazy how many people get traded, like, the day before the deadline. It's true. There's so many people that get traded. And then how yeah. many buyouts occur afterwards. Exactly. Oh, yeah. It's a very active time around the NBA trade deadline. And, I mean, going back to Ben's, the Ben Simmons thing, I mean... Look, there have been so many athletes who have sat out the whole entire year or have tried to get themselves traded. But it's different if we're talking about like a James Harden type of player compared to a Ben Simmons because James Harden's trade value is huge, right? Mm -hmm. Not right now. I mean, well, <laughs> not still, right. I don't even know. I that. mean, they're he, not looking at trade James he Harden. Could, they could still trade him, so they ain't trading no James Harden. No, no but they, they could if they wanted to. That's that's the point that I was making. They yeah, they I definitely mean, want somebody that's there on their active roster but, every day. But the Sixers are not being easy with the whole Simmons thing because they're no, like they're not they're, budging at no, all. No, they're not. So no. at all, it's uh, it's a it's a rocky situation over there. But um, Anthony, you wanna you wanna you wanna touch on your Lakers a little bit? You know. I love my Lakers, okay? And what are we doing? Nothing still, but it's okay. But my homeboy, Stanley Johnson, gave us the dub. I'm glad that we got him. Even though it's, you know, a 10-day contract, you know, he's he's still balling. He's balling. He, I mean... He, he was a really crucial part in that uh, win against the Jazz on Monday night. Yeah, um, yeah. 101 to 95 in the fourth quarter, you know, Stanley Johnson came in clutch for real. So... Just to touch on your Lakers a little bit, whenever I watch them play, it really <laughs> comes down to they've got a guy in his 19th NBA season who very well could win the NBA scoring title, and then just a bunch of guys you don't know what you're getting with on a nightly basis. Yeah, I mean, LeBron's has, Le- LeBron has said it multiple times in press conferences of there's just no chemistry, and no. there is no chemistry. That, that That's the no. problem. I mean, you know, I love, I like Frank Vogel, but... Even if we fire Frank Vogel, okay, what are we gonna get? We Jason Kidd's not on the team no more. Right. I mean, th- so they would. Uh, their interim head coach is David Fisdale, who coached during when Vogel had his uh, absence due to COVID. And I love Fisdale, but I just don't know. He's not the long term answer. No, of course not. I mean, I mean, the coach right now is LeBron James, and everybody knows it. Everybody in the league knows that. That LeBron James is. He's the head coach. He's the general manager. He's the owner. He's 
everything. There, there was a report that came out today that LeBron had a big hand in the acquiring of Russell Westbrook. Well, of, in the course. Offseason. Well, of course. Of course he did. Course. And not that we didn't already knew that, yeah. but it was reported. But yeah, like absolutely. Anthony said, he's the GM. He makes all decisions. He makes all the decisions. Remember, well, remember what happened in the, uh, um, whenever he was with the Cavs? <laughs> and that squad came together, and he he said, "Yeah, we're trading all you guys." Yes, yeah, so yep, I did. mean, this he is how, like half the team. The, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So this is this is how the interview goes. So whenever the Lakers interview somebody, or when the Cavaliers uh, interview somebody, they would bring someone in and be like, "Hey, okay, so this is our one question: Are you okay with doing absolutely nothing and letting LeBron control everything?" And they're like, "Yeah, okay, then here's X amount of million dollars. Have fun. You got <laughs> right. course. You got permanent courtside seats." Right, and I mean, you know. LeBron is when look, be appreciative of what LeBron James is doing right now because when he's out the league, he ain't coming back to the league to play, guys. He's probably gonna be a, a general manager or something like that. Like honestly, because like I don't even think he's gonna be a general. I think he's gonna own a team. Oh, well, He'll probably he, well, make I mean, a team. He, he owns like I mean, so his net worth I want to say is north of seven hundred fifty million dollars right now he's yeah. gonna eventually become an owner of an nba franchise which yeah, one, yeah. that's the more interesting question i mean he owns i mean jordan did, doesn't he own so. a soccer team right. right now uh yeah well he's got a partial stake in liverpool over yeah. in uh england obviously and then he's got other business ventures i think he's got like a pizza empire in los angeles yep blaze he, pizza yeah that's you guys blaze pizza y'all so good i love y'all's pizza <laughs> it ain't sponsored but i just love I was, the pizza I free free uh free yeah. sponsors he, <laughs> well he also has the shop he's uh the new star in uh the space michael, jam space jam michael jordan movie uh no it's not this is a lebron james movie yeah, this is michael jordan made it famous let's be real yeah michael jordan. i mean yes we know that but <laughs> still. michael jordan's was better so uh, yeah. I mean, first of all, in movie's sake, separate sports sake, I know we don't really do this on the show. The original is always better than the sequel. Yeah, always. that is always. true. That is true. It's very I mean, hard to make unless, a sequel. Unless you're, better. and I know we're not talking about movies, but unless it's a Marvel movie, I think every movie that Marvel okay, makes but sports is, wise, but sports is wise. very, very good. <laughs> Let's get back wise. to the sports. But Let's sports get back wise. to the sports. But sports going wise. back to the game, you know, one, right. 101 to 95, I mean, you know, 44%. From the field goal range uh, for the Lakers compared to 37 for the Jazz. I mean, the Jazz just, I don't think the Jazz really showed up that much. Um, they had one of their worst shooting nights of the year. Yeah, they did. They did. I mean, they shot, I mean, from for, from free throw, obviously 21 for 24, but 12 for 46 from the three point line. Like, you don't see that from the Jazz. The Jazz are, are you know, pretty good when it comes to shooting three points, especially when you got someone like Donovan Mitchell. Yeah, coming into the game, they were number one in the NBA in offensive efficiency. Yeah. And they shot, what was it, 26% from three-point range. Yep. I want to say it was Donovan Mitchell, Bogdanovich, Jordan Clarkson, and Rudy Gay shot like one of 26 from three-point range. It was like an unheard of, like, ugly just shooting night for them. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell only had 13 points. I would expect him to at least average 20, yeah. at least 20 points. Yeah, no, Donovan's, I mean, Donovan's an all-star, Donovan's... Well, he's out now, so... Right, unfortunately so, but... Um, yeah, no, I, the thing that I'll say about the Lakers is that they do have Anthony Davis come back, even though he hasn't been playing up to his potential recently. I mean, it, it's still a better player than outside of LeBron James that everyone on your roster. Maybe that could turn into something, maybe, but I just, I don't really see a lot of potential with this uh, Lakers franchise going forward, and especially, like, potentially making the playoffs and making a deep run. I just don't see a lot of hope there. I don't know, but I saw I know I know Anthony was happy when he saw Russ dunk on the Yeah. Uh, made that dunk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that, I mean, that was clean. I mean Russ is still good for highlights. Not good for mm-hmm. winning basketball though. I mean my thing is this is that with LeBron James you have at least what, three, four more years? If that. of LeBron, yeah, if, if that, that. We like, just, you just gotta wait. Injuries, you just gotta wait till Bronny comes in the league. That's all. I yeah, need to wait, so. I get that. But like, what is what's y'all's future, guys? Like, what's the Lakers' future when LeBron they, James is gone? They traded it all the way. That's like, what they did. like, like, I get it. You have Anthony Davis, but Anthony Davis is no LeBron James. No, not. And close. I love AD when healthy. One of the best power forwards in the game. Period. Point right. blank. Right. But who's gonna facilitate? Russell was gonna be gone. Yeah, Melo definitely going to be gone. Yeah, I mean, it'll probably be a reboot, or they'll have to try to trade somebody. It's going to have know. to be a reboot. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't I mean, know. I don't see nobody from high school or you know that's that's playing like Kobe Bryant. So you're not going to get a no 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 Froby <laughs> coming in this coming in the draft, unless you get lucky and then you know in a couple of years you get Mikey Williams, which I don't think that's going to happen because he's probably going to be a first round pick, first overall or third overall. 
Yeah. And who knows where you guys are going to be in the draft. Yeah, I, don't I know. love watching his highlight tapes, man. Oh, for sure. I love it. But my thing is that you guys are not preparing for the future. At least the Brooklyn Nets have somewhat of a future with um with Thomas. Yeah. With Cam. Yeah. That boy that boy was averaging 21 points a game at LSU. Yeah, which I mean the, the both the Nets and the Lakers are in win now mode right now. Obviously one team's doing a lot better than the other team is. The Heat jumped them, uh, the uh, the Nets in yeah, the they Eastern did. Conference, right? And yep. Katie's out, so yeah, uh, six to eight weeks, right? I believe four to six, actually. Four to six. Okay, so maybe not as long as I thought, but yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be an issue. Obviously, losing the best player in the world off your team. I mean, that's that's a big blow for any franchise. So we will see. Uh, next topic, kind of in the NBA, Luka Doncic, forty-one triple doubles. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was there to witness the 41st, you know. How was uh, that? It was How fun. Was it? it was great. Uh, the only thing I have to be a critic of is, I mean, I can go check the stats, but I'm pretty sure he didn't make a single three-pointer. He's been struggling from three as of late. Yeah, no, I saw a stat. He's shooting the worst basketball he has ever shot, but winning the most. Make of that what you will. <laughs> okay, how many assists is he getting, though, per game? Oh, no, I mean, he had like, yeah, he had like, a, I think it was like 11, 12. Okay, so so I can I, I can respect that then. I mean, he's still like twenty two points. So like, I mean, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, if you're shooting bad, that's but you're step making back, the three assist, is not hitting as well. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, that's bad. So, um, maybe after the which I mean, break. I don't really care if you're winning games and you're you know you're you're sharing the ball and everything's looking good. So I've got Luka Doncic's numbers for the season. Uh, he's averaging twenty four point six points, eight point six rebounds, and eight point eight assists. Very good. I mean, damn, very good. Damn near a triple double. He's uh, his shooting numbers are down in terms of field goal percentage. Uh, his career average is forty five point four. He's shooting forty three point one, and then from three, his career average is thirty two point six, and he's shooting twenty eight point nine percent from three. That's a very, year. very, very low three point percentage for somebody who was known for their step back. Yeah, I mean, well, Luca, Luca's more of a volume. He's not an efficient three point shooter. I don't know if he's ever been like. You know, a Steph Curry. Well, no, no, no. That's not. I'm not saying. He, yeah, I'm not saying he's like a bang, bang, right. bang, bang, bang three point shooter, but he's he makes them. No, I mean he's lost one of his. Uh, no, I want. I don't want to say lost. He's he's definitely not feeling it in terms of one of his go to moves, especially late in the games. I mean, how many times have we seen Doncic just fade to the left, shoot an arcing rainbow, and you're like, I ain't going in. You go right through the net. And it's. Yeah, I mean, it's one of the prettiest shots in basketball. Yeah, it's a beautiful shot. I, I really want to see it come back. Uh, Luca Magic. Yeah, <laughs> Luca Magic, man. I really want to see it come back, but I guess I don't know, man. We'll just have to wait. I mean, like you said, maybe it'll come back after the All Star break. Mm. But uh Hopefully he doesn't have an all star slump. That's yeah. the biggest thing. Well, I mean, so he can't afford that, yeah. So his numbers are down from last season. Uh I mean he was shooting thirty five percent from three last year and obviously he's not shooting that great this year. But I mean, over time, you know, let him kind of sit there and get into the you know months leading up to the playoffs, you know, where the, the games really start to ramp up and see if he kind of rounds into form. Uh, well, I look, just, I, we're winning. We we're are. winning a lot, and I like it. Right. And our defense is impeccable. We're really good at defense. We've held all 10 of our last opponents under 100. So, yeah, you know, whether if Luke is going to miss every three in the game or he's going to make all of them, if he's going to be averaging a triple-double and he's going to be sharing the ball and everybody's going to be getting double-digit scoring and we're winning... I don't care. Yeah, as long as you're winning, I mean, that's all that matters. I'd rather, I'd rather, right. I'd rather us win a championship or go farther than a one round exit in the playoffs, than Luca have the highest three point percentage and score a triple double in every single game. So yeah. that that's my take on that as far as yeah. Now Luca can go the out triple the first double round again. king. He can not not three years in a row. But I do think it is very impressive that this is what his. Fourth year in the league. Yep. Fourth year in the league, and he already has more than half of the fran of the Mavericks franchise's total of triple doubles. Yeah. The Mavericks franchise total is forty. His is forty one. I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Luka, Pending if he makes one tonight. The Luka Doncic has the potential to be the greatest player in Mavericks history. Now again, that's a lofty expectations because of Dirk. He's got to get some more accomplishments and everything, and he's young, and I don't want to put that pressure on him, but he has that potential. I'll go a step he could further. Be a, he could be a top tw uh, 75 player oh, absolutely. if he continues at the absolutely. rate he was at. I'll yeah. go a step further. He, uh, he has the potential to be the greatest European player of that all time. A, that's a very, yeah, that's a hard. 
That's a hot take right there. That's yeah. a hard, Cause, hard accomplishment. Because if you look at his stats right now, like there, the he, the he, like, like what Kevin said, he's breaking record records. Yep. We're talking Michael Jordan records. Like those records, you you would have thought no one would be able to break those. But when Luca came in the game, everything changed for real. Everything did. I mean, he's the fortunes of the Mavericks franchise. They are very fortunate to land a player like Luka Doncic because he's he's that this and everything for them um obviously you know Christos Porzingis is playing better and hopefully those two can really uh expand upon their dynamic duo but I mean it the the, the buck stops with Luka in it's terms of very Dallas it's very invigorating to watch KP block a ball let me just add that yes it is I saw <laughs> was him it block, better in person <laughs> yeah I saw him block a ball about six times and I was like yeah. oh it's so good to watch I love watching it oh it's so great I'm just glad that Jason Kidd is there to help KP be KP again. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit. But um, I was talking about, you know, uh, the ups and downs as far as, you know, Luka Doncic shooting and everything like that. But, I mean, let's go Let's go jump all over to the NCAA. The ups and downs of Tech, man. I just, they're a hard team to figure out. They have. Um, they recently lost to Kansas State, an unranked team by 11, but then they also have wins over number 15, Iowa State, and number 5, Baylor. I mean, they... That Baylor game was something to, to fathom about. It was. I mean, that's a potential Big 12 championship preview right there. 65 to 62? Woo, doggy. Man, that was something. Yeah. And I really thought Baylor was, was actually going to, you know, dig it out. Yeah. Like I thought they were gonna get the win. I mean, yeah. they held that spot for a long time. That's they true. Really did. That's true. Yeah. I mean, first loss of the season. Uh, some people thought that with Chris Beard leaving for the University of Texas, that Texas Tech might take a step back in terms of their overall play. Mark Adams has got those guys full fledged tournament mode, and it's January. Like they are ready. <laughs> right. It's they only January. Ready. They're yeah. ready for March. They are. Like they're revving up. Yeah. And it's. Uh. I mean. Look back at that game. I mean, they just dominated Baylor. Shot better for them from the field. Uh, you know, hit more free throws. I mean, they were just overall just a more complete team on the floor. And uh, credit to them because I mean that's not an easy team going up against the defending champs. So yeah, and I mean, fourteen turnovers compared to twelve against you know Texas Tech. I mean, that's that that's something. I mean, you can't have that many turnovers. You know, against. Texas Tech, and you can't sleep on Tech either. I mean, they're ranked number eighteen. They're twelve and three right now. They should be and ranked higher. They they should be they should be ranked higher. Like they should at least be ranked in at least the top ten um, instead of the top twenty, in my opinion. But I mean, like you said, you know, Baylor did shoot better from three point, and I mean from free throw range, Baylor shot better too. I I just think it's the intensity that Texas Tech played with. Their defense is one of the best in the country by far. Yeah, let me just jump in here real quick. I know we're talking about uh, college basketball, but um, I have the current scores uh, pulled up for the Mavericks and the Raptors game. They're currently turned. To- oh goodness gracious! They're bro- they're uh, currently tied at fifty one apiece. Uh, they're not even into halftime yet. Uh, Luca has twenty seven and three. Twenty seven and three. I mean, hey, that's Luca. And he has made does. one three pointer. He's <laughs> one of five. One of, five. One, one of five. One of five. He's seven of fourteen from a uh, field goal. So, but I just wanted to throw that in there because um, we were talking about the Mavericks earlier, and so I just wanted to pull it up because if he gets another triple double tonight, that would be that'd be pretty bonkers. But anyway, to jump back, but it's about winning. Yeah, it is about winning. But That's the main thing. Three double. game win streak right now. Yeah, triple doubles are pretty cool. Uh, they, mean, they are pretty cool. You can't they are pretty cool. So. But uh, I mean, let's let's go jump back over to the uh, NCAA, and I know we're talking about the fall of Tech and their ups and downs, and what you know, what's going on over there with Chris Beer leaving and everything like that. I mean, I don't even know if you could call it a fall. I mean, they've been yeah, like I, said, can't, outside, I, yeah, outside I can't of, even say that either. Outside of a couple slip ups, you could argue, but I mean, the Tech. So do you think now. it's just simply that they're ranked lower than they what they should be? I Absolutely. think so for sure. Yeah, absolutely, because I mean, you get, yeah. I mean, you you beat Baylor, you beat Baylor. You, you started Oklahoma the take. You started the. Was, you beat take, Iowa State. You started the takedown of Baylor. It was take, yeah. Because yeah. after their lo- after Baylor lost to Tech, they went downhill. Yeah, they did. They they did. they did. But I mean, like I said, you know, you beat Baylor. You beat Oklahoma State. Yes, you lost to K State, uh, K State, which was a surprising loss. I mean, come on now, like you no right sixty two to fifty one. That's ridiculous. 
But then you come back yesterday and you beat Iowa, Iowa State, State yeah. which is ranked 15. So, I mean, you know, they are they going up and down? Uh, I think they're still on the rise as, you know, if, by, by looking at the scores and what they've been playing. And, I mean, you know, Mark Adams has, has, has got them boys balling. And two games to look out for. Um, Monday, the January the 24th, they play the number 7th ranked Kansas Jayhawks, another Big 12 potential favorite. And then the game that all Tech fans have circled on their calendar against the 23rd ranked Texas Longhorns, Chris Beard comes to Lubbock. Yeah. Makes you know, his return. You know, I'll... The I'll, Texas season of basketball has been... I don't want to say a disappointment, but we started off really hot and we're not doing too great. And so I'm hoping we can turn that around. So, you know, I would say this is, and, and, and this is pretty bold. They're going to lose to Kansas. They're going to beat Texas. I think so. Talk that, about, that, about, talk about tech. That's, that's yes, what I'm Texas going with. Tech. Yes. They're going to, they're going to lose to Kansas because Kansas has a phenomenal squad. Yeah. And, and, and I'm not trying to give them a lot of credit, like so much credit, but I mean, they're being teams like crazy right now. Yeah, I mean Kansas is really good. Some, I mean, some of the scores are have been close, like sixty-seven to sixty-four yesterday against OU, eighty-five to fifty-nine on the fifteenth against West Virginia, which is ridiculous. But then against ranked teams, I mean, they're only beating them by a couple points. Like it's not by a lot. So I don't. Yeah, it's hard to make of the of the Kansas uh, Jayhawks, but Auburn. On the other hand, it's pretty clear what they are, and that is a winning team. They really are. Yeah, that's they're true. at number one right now. And uh, the last time I checked, they had thirteen straight wins. Yeah, Auburn's. Yeah, Auburn. You can't sleep on Auburn. Like some of these teams you see now in January, you're gonna definitely see in March, for sure, for sure. Baylor, Texas Tech. I mean, Auburn, obviously. You know, and Auburn's currently beating Georgia, thirty-two to twenty right now. Yeah, in the first half, and so. uh, they they to me, um, you can make an argument they're the most complete uh team in the country right now. As Kevin mentioned, thirteen straight wins. Um, when you when I personally think of Auburn, I've thought about all the great football teams and the Iron Bulls that they've competed against Alabama. This basketball team is uh, leaving their mark, saying don't forget about us because they are rolling right now. Um, with the Surprising, uh, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say uh, disappointing uh, showing that we've seen from other the other dominant teams, uh, i.e. Duke and North Carolina. They've stepped up as one of those teams like, hey, you know, if that top spot's up for grabs, we'll take it. Um, they're dominating uh, SEC play. They do have a game upcoming against Kentucky uh, Saturday, January 22nd. So this Saturday, uh, that'll be a very interesting game. I'm hoping to see who comes out on that because I think that'll be a really true test. Uh, for Auburn, um, but yeah, I mean the SEC. They just beat recently number thirteenth ranked LSU back on uh, in late December, and they beat them pretty handily by fifteen points. This just seems like a squad that's I mean destined to be you know an Elite Eight, Final Four team in my opinion, just from watching them from afar. Yeah, I mean Jabari Smith averaging sixteen points a game. <laughs> you got uh, Walker uh, Kessler averaging you know seven point five rebounds. And Wendell Green Jr. with four points set with at least four assists, four to five assists. I mean, they're balling. They are literally balling out this year, and that and, and that, that team is going to be crazy. And I mean, you got Wa- and you got Walker again with at least four blocks a game. <laughs> like I mean, that defense is elite. Yeah, and the fact that they're distributing the ball so well, four guys averaging in the double figures. I mean, that just shows to go how well rounded this team is. I just, uh, to me, like they just seem like a team that's a veteran led. You know, well coached, just dominant powerhouse right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, if they if, if they keep this route, then they're definitely going to be something to reckon with in the tournament. Absolutely. I do think. Uh, speaking of college basketball, and speaking of those teams that I thought are underperforming a little bit, I wanted to talk about the ACC for a moment because last night. There was a game between the Miami Hurricanes and the North Carolina Tar Heels. And if you were to tell me that the game was happening really any time during the Roy Williams era, I'd be like, oh, yeah, North Carolina's got it. You know, based on by how many points is really the question. Last night, that was not the case. Halftime, the score was 49-22, to and this final score ended up being 85-57, to uh, which dropped North Carolina to 12-5 on the season. Them and Duke uh, are not even in the top two teams in the ACC. 
uh, this season for basketball. And those are two of the more traditional powerhouses in the ACC, not just the ACC, but the NCAA basketball in general. Yeah, the big blues. Yeah, big blues. And, uh, I mean, with Coach K set to leave for Duke next year, I almost wonder if this is going to be similar fate that Duke will have to uh, overcome next season with a drop-off in coaching. You know, I don't know. We'll we'll have to see when when that time comes. Right now, you know, Duke is just it's a it's it's a different it's a different squad this year. I mean, I had high hopes for them for sure, but I mean, just with what I'm seeing now this season, uh, they're they're still going to be in the tournament. Mm-hmm. I still think they're going to be in the tournament. I don't know how far they're going to go, but I mean, aside from Duke, North Carolina, that loss to to Miami, that's a, that's a shocker. Yeah, well, I mean, Miami is the number one team in the ACC at the moment. They have a 6-1 and one conference record. I mean, Miami's, again, just not traditionally one of those teams that you would think of because it's normally been ran by either Duke or North Carolina. Or and, Kentucky. And we're, yeah, well, Kentucky's more in the uh, SEC, not I in the do, ACC. I do, have to, I do have to jump in here. I believe that um, I said that Auburn was number one, and I was incorrect. Uh, Auburn is number two. Uh, Gonzaga is still number one. Um let me just list off some notables as of right now. The AP top twenty-five, Gonzaga is one, um, at fourteen and two. Auburn is two at sixteen and one. Um, another notable is Baylor, who did claim the number one spot, who then lost to Texas Tech and Oklahoma State. <clears throat> they are at number five. Um, Kansas, as y'all mentioned, the powerhouse. Uh, they're at number seven, and uh, Tech, who is probably a little bit lower than they deserve at 13 of four is at um, number 18, Texas at 23. Um, I'm just trying to look over here. Villanova at 11. So, I mean, you got some scattering around here for, for some basketball teams, but um, yeah, I mean, Colin, to jump back to what you were saying, North Carolina is not in this top 25. No, they're not. And, uh, you know, I, I understand that they're not quite what, you know, Duke was in terms of the ACC, but they were still, one of, like uh, Anthony said, one of the blue bloods of college basketball. Them, Kentucky, Duke, Kansas. I mean, we all know who are the dominant powers when you think of college basketball. And through 17 games so far, you can say that North Carolina has underachieved. And that loss to Miami yesterday, I mean, I just I didn't feel like I was really watching North Carolina basketball. They get, I mean, they have produced so much NBA talent from, obviously, Michael Jordan, Jerry Stackhouse. I mean, the list goes on and on. And to see what the program – I mean, I, I don't want to say they've fallen off a cliff because they are 12-5. and five. I mean, it's respectable. I think they're just more. rebuilding. I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, because this this is the first year. Every dynasty has its fall. That's the thing. Right, right, right. I mean, this is the first year you don't have, you know, hit the, the main guy. You know, it's obviously a new coach. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I mean, we all saw it coming. So I think it's just, I, th- I think it's just a rebuild. And I mean, are there new giants now? Of course, Auburn, Baylor. Like two, three years ago, you'd not think Baylor was going to be like this at all. And now look at them; like they're top dogs right now. I mean, some. I mean, when 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 Coach K, not Coach K, when uh, Coach Calipari leaves, I mean, what's going to happen? You know, I mean, like. You're gonna have another interim head coach, and you know, it's gonna it's just gonna fluctuate like well, water. Well, let's uh, let's take it to the campus. Actually, uh, let's jump off of AP twenty five for for a second uh, to close this one out. The Mean Green men's basketball team have actually been balling, and I know that could sound biased coming from the UNT campus, but I mean the stats don't lie. Uh, Cause you got TP five, yes, yes sir, sir. So, Tyler Perry. So man. they're they're eleven and four for the season. Uh, they're four and one in Conference USA, and they're on a, a win streak currently. Um, but they're uh, they've won ten out of the last nine games, and that's including. But that that does include the three cancel games that we've had due to um, other teams' COVID problems. But regardless, um, four and one in Conference USA. So the the Main Green basketball team have been balling. Uh, Tyler Perry has been. I mean, I know I've been, I've said balling like a million times, but dude, he's a baller, shot Ty- caller. Ty- Everybody knows it. Everybody knows Tyler it. Tyler Perry is not the dude that you want to guard. No, 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 no. This man at his JUCO won a won a championship. JUCO product. So like you know, he you know he won, and to he win. was MVP. He was. He's uh, I did this in one of our sports casts uh recently. He is, in, in the entire nation, 
He is top five in points scored off the bench for a player. I mean, that's insane to think about the, all the other programs out there. He is so good and fearless. He is. He, I mean, he's lights out shooting. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Like, he is so good. And he's got a nice couple pair of Jordans, too. Like, I've had some conversations <laughs> with him. He, he, he got shoe game. Yeah. Yeah, he got yeah. some he shoe got game. He got some game. Yeah. Everyone remembers on campus the team that led us to our first uh, NCAA tournament win this past season. We we were we were running through guard play. Uh, Javion Hamlet was the main guy spearheading us, going ahead uh, past Purdue. Tyler Perry, we hope that you can uh, lead the same for us. Uh, I mean, we're, we're all behind you, man. Look, yes, of course. Look, man. Look, let me say something about Tyler Perry, okay? This man is a killer, okay? This man is a dog. This man wants the ball in his hand. And I don't know what the coach is doing by putting him on the bench. But, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah, I would I just agree. keep him on the bench. And, you know, maybe when tournament play comes, which I believe, well, we all know and we all see it, like they're trying to get another banner. Yeah. I think 100%. they're going to get another banner, too. Well, just just uh, just a real quick throwing in, keeping it college level, Um JT Daniels entered the transfer portal uh, from uh, from Georgia, uh, and Stetson Bennett announced that he is going to stay. Uh, real quick, let me get y'all's opinions on that before we uh, before we head out of this first hour. I mean, ultimately, uh, with the transfer portal, I'm in favor of it. I think it gives the college athlete uh, room to make their own decisions with their own career and everything and do what's best for them. We see it with college coaches all the time, whether it's in basketball, football, wherever, you know, they sit there and they recruit a kid. They, you know, they come into your house, you know, spend time with your family, get you to come to their school, you know, whether they're in state, out of state or whatever. And then literally the next off season, they're like, hey, I found a better job. I'm leaving. And now the athletes stuck there making this four year commitment. So I think this transfer portal is great for the NCAA. I think it allows college athletes to really take the power back into their own hands. And I'm all for it. Anthony, what are your thoughts? Well, also, there's some more news um, within that portal. Uh, Georgia receiver Jermaine Brewson also put his name in the transfer portal just this past Wednesday. So, I mean, Stetson Bennett, he's, he he may not have a receiver next year. I guess we'll just have to see. Uh, I don't I don't know. I can't off of the top of my dome. I can't remember how many receivers are going into the drafts from the Georgia team. I don't think. Think is that many? Well, I know. Yeah. I know Pickens is their main guy. Is Pickens he, their main guy. Uh, is he declaring for the draft this year, or is he is he going to stay for another I year? Th- I think he's probably going to stay, but we'll have to jump back to that uh, later. But Anthony, what are your thoughts on the transfer portal? Just real quick. I'm not going to say it's ridiculous, but it's kind of ridiculous, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit, because it's like if you're not seeing the the quality of you know your potential at one school, oh, you know, I'll just bounce to another school okay cool and if it doesn't work okay i'll bounce to another school yeah guys that's not how life works a lot so it's like give yourself a shot at another at at trying it again okay if it is if it doesn't work at this school okay maybe try it again at the same school just to see if if you're able to figure it out like for example for spencer rattler i understand why he transferred like out of that school yeah obviously he could handle the pressure of being a boomer sooner so he couldn't handle the pressure of another quarterback taking a spot, which has happened two times, and they're both superstars. Yeah. So. Yeah, I get it. I mean, for Georgia, I mean, you got a guy that, he, yeah, he left. JT, you know, Daniels, he left. But you got a guy who just won you an Addy. So, right. you know, you can't be too mad about it. Uh, but, yeah, so we're going to close it out on that, actually. Um do, uh, do be sure to stick around and listen to Anthony and Cullen's take on the top five quarterbacks of NFL history and who a better player was between Deion Sanders and Randy Voss. I'm not going to lie. Y'all should really listen to this list. Like, y'all should really tune into this, it's this next one. It's, it's very interesting. interesting. But. Like, is Cullen, we, we, we're going to have to talk in this Yeah, there's going to be some this. heated discussions on this one. We're going to talk about it. Anyway, don't forget to grab your stool and be a fool. See y'all in our...